Welcome back to the School of Calisthenics. Before we go any further, we just really, really like you to click subscribe. When you don't subscribe, Tim gets upset. I'm upset already. <laughs> you've not done it already. So click subscribe, and then we are going to show you how to progress your push-ups. If you've been in calisthenics for a while, you've got some good training background behind you, you might have found that push-ups have become easy and that your progression has stagnated a little bit. So we need to make sure we're going to give you some overload to your training, ways to make it harder so that you can keep progressing, so you keep getting those push-up gains. So we're going to pull out some tools from the locker, we're going to take you through them. It's important that we're always doing stuff which is challenging the body, that's how we get stronger and that's how we keep moving our training in the right direction. All that we're going to take from our locker to progress our push-ups is going to be our levers and angles. And what we're going to do is have elevated jack up on some small parallettes. Now this could be some dumbbells, you could use some boxes, anything which means you can get a little bit more um, hand height away from the floor but leaving this space in the middle free for you to put your chest. A couple of key things I'm going to get Jacko to rep out a few for me. Elbows are going to still face behind the body, so we're screwing the hands in, elbows pointing behind. So even if we were on flat hands on the floor on a box or into a bar position here, we're still trying to create that rotation, keeping the elbow pointing behind. If Jacko does a bad one for me, the elbow is going to fly to the side. This just jams the shoulder into the front of the socket, not a happy place for us. It was horrible. Horrible. Now, the benefit of having the hands elevated is we start to access some range of movement that we can't normally get if our hands are on the floor. So all of this good stuff here, you can see now Jacko's hands are passing the, um, the armpit. We're starting to create some more strength through a different range of movement. If we've not spent some time there before, we're not going to be strong there. It's going to be difficult. That's one way which we can start to build some nice strength in. And particularly for this position, we might actually get some better range of movement, which we can then access in our muscle-up positions, building some of that more global capacity strength. We're going to increase resistance by using a resistance band. Now, there's a couple of ways and to, to get this around the back. Tim puts his hands through either end, and then he's going to take it around his back, and then it's going to go across the middle, top to his back, and it's going to keep his elbow in by working and holding onto the side of his arm there. Then he's able to jump down, and get into some good push-up positions. So Tim goes into the, once he's got the band set, he's into the top of his um, push-up position. Just a couple of key points on this is the band is gonna help to keep the elbow in nice and tight, but he's gotta make sure he still actively screws the elbow so they're pointing backwards. Then he's gonna have his bum on to help keep his core and trunk in a nice straight line as he's going up and down. So he's gonna imagine he's got a 50 pound note between his butt cheeks and it's a windy day and he doesn't wanna let that bad boy go because we ain't got much money. Um, and then the other thing is to keep his trunk nice aligned, to complement his glutes, the other side is going to be his abs, he's going to uh, tense those like he's ready to take a punch. Ah, good, and then from there he's going to keep those engaged, elbows start pointing back as he drives up, the resistance band is just providing that extra bit of um, resistance to push against, and the whole time you see his body keeping that nice straight alignment through that midsection and trunk. Third technique to progress your push-ups is to add some additional weight in the form of a weight vest. Now this has got two benefits. The first one is it makes the increases the resistance, so it makes the movement more difficult. And the second one, makes you, look like, <laughs> makes you look like you're in SWAT. What would, what would happen if this guy knocked on your door in that vest? I'd be flipping terrified. This is actually, yeah, it's a weighted vest. It's not um, a SWAT team bulletproof. What do they call them? They call them bulletproof? bulletproof vest. Bulletproof vest. I'd also want to know, is like, why is... What happened? <laughs> Budgets are hard times at the SWAT department. <laughs> right, I've got Sergeant SWAT in position, and what we've got is the weight vest putting, placing a little bit more overload on the upper body, and that means the core is going to have to work a little bit harder. So it's a simple movement, the same as we before. We're going to keep the elbows nice and tight. We're going to drop in close to the floor, get the chest down. What I don't want to see is just dropping down, losing control of the middle, chest arches up, and then we eventually find ourselves back into some form of a proper position at the top of the movement. So if we're going to add load, it's got to be progressive, it's got to be stable in the movement pattern so that we're not just making additional load and then compromising technique. Um, tool number four is going to be using our levers and angles. So I'm an engineering student by trade. I've got a first, first. Yeah, first, but, but that's a different story. Um, but we're going to work by um, increasing the demand by having his feet higher up so it's, it's going to be like the equivalent of an incline chest press where that we get more accentuation on the front of the chest and the higher those feet go up, it's going to load the front portion, the anterior portion of the shoulder more, 
which is going to make it much, much harder. Eventually, if you went all the way up to vertical, then you're looking at obviously like a handstand or wall, uh, handstand push-up. So, we've got a small 30 centimetre box here. Tim's feet goes on top of it, then the same principles apply. He's going, screwing the elbows back, bums on, cores on, then he's dropping into that position. And you see now, rather than his body being completely uh, horizontal, he starts to work at a bit of an angle. That's going to increase the demand on the front portion and the upper part of his shoulder and the upper part of his chest. So applying the university degree principle that more is better, we've just got for progression number five. We've got feet elevated, putting more load over the shoulders. We've got hands off the ground to create full range of movement. Jack goes really struggling. Awesome. We've got extra weight on the shoulders, and I've got this baby. <laughs> And there's some more resistance across ah. the shoulders. Number five, if you're not sure what to do, put more together. Now we're confident that has revolutionized your push-up training. So if you want some more content from us, click subscribe. And also we've got a free beginner's guide and we would love you to have that. So make sure you get a copy here. Excuse the bicep on this one, but if you want some more free uh, videos, look down there, click on that. It's gonna give you some more free tutorials on help your pushing. Thank you for watching. Class dismissed. Dismissed. <laughs>